every single game on the board on Saturday in the NHL. We're going to cover right here on the Every Game on the Board podcast. Andrew McGinnis here, guys, wagertalk.com. Last week, I cannot thank you all enough for how many of you guys tuned in, liked, commented, and of course, hopefully subscribed to the channel uh, for every single pick I gave out on Saturday in the NHL. So we're going to do it again, and I'll tell you what, guys, uh, it's a lot more games than it even was last week uh, in the NHL. So I'm super excited. Cannot wait to dive into all of these. Of course, again, guys, I'll say the same thing I said last week. Uh, I'm going to be brief with this. You know, some of these picks I like more than others. Some of these are leans. Uh, and also, I do have a notepad I'm looking at. So if you're seeing me look to the left, look to the right. Yes, I'm definitely taking a look at a few things uh, that I wrote down. There are a ton, a ton of games. Let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into it. We always have early afternoon games, early start games in the NHL on Saturdays. Well, we have one to go here. Lightning versus Senators. Eastern Conference Atlantic Division battle here. We're going to take the Senators on the money line at minus 105. The Lightning have a have had a really good start to their season. They're 3-0. They're perfect. They have looked unbelievable. But I just feel like this could be a really good buy sign at home for the Senators team. Coming off a, a shaky performance, to call it, against the New Jersey Devils. And it was at their home, built home arena as well. Um, and this Tampa Bay team, again... I think they're a strong team. I think people were kind of sleeping on them coming into the season, but I also believe they're a team that lacks that depth that they once had. So because of that, when their top players aren't performing well, I think it'll kind of impact the rest of their team. So a lot of pressure on the top guys for that team to perform well, but either way, still a really strong team. But I think Ottawa gets the job done. I feel like they'll be ready to go at home. I feel like their top six will be ready to go. And they might have Allmark back and ready on Saturday night. Not confirmed yet, but that'll certainly help them out in a very, very big way. So we'll start things off with the Ottawa Senators on the money line. Uh, second game, we have the Red Wings and the Predators. Can you guys believe this? The Nashville Predators have not won a game yet. You know, I didn't know anybody that wasn't high on the Nashville Predators. Everybody seemed to love the Nashville Predators going into this season. And yet they have not won a game yet but having said that some early season revenge uh for this predators team uh after they lost three nothing last week to this very detroit red wings team so i do like this predators team we're going to take a look at them to get the job done but even more so we're going to go up and over three and a half goals in the team total for the Nashville Predators. Steven Stamkos, Jonathan Marcheseau, um, bringing their talents to this team. And hopefully we can start seeing it on the power play with them as well. They still have a great goaltender. They still have good defense. I think this is a classic Smashville victory. Uh, get the job done at home and hopefully take care of things against the Red Wings. Like the Red Wings, are, they're not going to be happy. They're off two losses in a row, back-to-back -back losses against the New York Rangers. They had a home-and-home -home against the Rangers. But when it comes down to it, um, I think this is a really good revenge spot early in the season and a Nashville team that's going to be uh, as desperate as they can be. I believe it's an 0-4 start to the season for the Nashville Predators. So this, to me, is a good buy-low spot for us to jump in. And I want to jump in with them at home as well. So we'll take the Nashville Predators team total up and over three and a half goals uh, guys you guys can see of course below the, sc uh, the screen the scroller here if anyone's interested in my plays we're up 16 units on the season at the time of recording this video uh, it's got off to a really good start low volume start we're doing really well with the team totals with the sides with the totals um, if you're interested for anything longer term more than just one day more than three days or seven days you guys can take fifty dollars off a 30-day NHL package by using that promo code SAVE50, SAVE50 over at my page. And, you know, we're going to pick and choose a few of these plays and a couple other ones as well and make them client releases on Saturday. And I cannot wait uh, to have a really big weekend in the NHL. And, of course, don't forget about those smaller days, you know, Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, the smaller slates. You can make some money in the NHL uh, as well. So SAVE50, guys, if you want to join me. Just pause the video, head over to wagertalk.com and join me uh, on some plays. And uh, we're going to have a really, really good season. Let's jump into Oilers and Stars. The Stars, 4-1 start to them for their season, but they're traveling back home 
uh, just in time to play against an Oilers team that is hoping to get on a run. You know, they, they got off to a good start uh, to their previous game. They didn't look back, putting up four goals. Um, looking for a fast start from both teams, though. This Stars team will not be happy with their previous performance. The Oilers, though, they're going to keep things going. But the big question is, what's more of an issue right now for the Oilers, scoring or defense? And I think it might be a little bit of both, but I'd say I'm more worried about their defense than I am about the scoring. So we're going to go over one and a half in the first period. A little juicy here, guys, with the minus 140. But hey, I'll take it. I'm a fan of it. Uh, it's going to be a rapid, fast start to this game for both these teams. We're going to go up and over one and a half first period, Oilers and Stars. Let's go to uh, Golden Knights taking on the Florida Panthers. Panthers have been traveling around a little bit here, guys. Uh, Golden Knights as well. Golden Knights might be the road team, but uh, Panthers, this is their second uh, game of the road trip. And to me, uh, excuse me, second game back at home for the Florida Panthers. It's a bet on spot. You know, I think that a lot of times guys want to fade teams in their first game back at home following a road trip. The Panthers lost to Vancouver in overtime, and that was their first game back at home after their road trip. It was a desperate spot for Vancouver to get their first win. Um, but I think the Panthers will bounce back. Um, the Panthers are top five in the league so far in expected goals. So they're creating all kinds of chances. All four lines are going to work. And the defending Stanley Cup champions are looking pretty good so far here, guys. So um, the fact is the Knights have had an easy start to their schedule with a lot easier opponents. A lot of teams that did not make the playoffs um, versus this Florida Panthers teams that had a lot tougher of a schedule and yet they're still playing some pretty good hockey. So um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Florida Panthers on the money line to get the job done. And let's keep things going here with the next game. We have the Montreal Canadiens and New York Islanders uh, going head to head here. Last week, guys, some of you guys called me a homer for liking the Montreal Canadiens in their game against the Senators. They were decent sized underdogs and they cashed that ticket. Well, Hey, please don't call me a homer again. It's just the way the situational spots work out. I like the Canadians once more. I like them to get the job done. Hey, and if you guys don't want to, to take that nice number on the money line at plus 180, go ahead and take that team total up and over two and a half goals to the Montreal Canadiens. The thing is about a younger team, they really need a kick in the ass every now and then. They need, um, they need to be kind of awakened. They need to have people kind of you know, punch them a few times to to kind of wake up. And unfortunately, in this early in the season, you can't be like that, but they are. And so they had two veteran teams at home take them down. The Penguins took them down. The LA Kings took them down. They looked sloppy defensively. They weren't creating much, but I think sometimes getting out on the road is a good thing for you. Getting out on the road, you know, having that bad taste in your mouth from back-to-back -back home losses I believe Montreal will take those feelings, get onto the road, and take down the Islanders. The Islanders have only scored two goals in their last three games. And despite some bad off uh, defensive play, I still kind of like what I'm seeing from the Montreal offense. So we're going to go ahead and take the team total up and over two and a half goals for the Montreal Canadiens on the road in Long Island, taking on the New York Islanders. Next game up, uh, after I take a glass of water here, Next game up, we have the Maple Leafs hosting the New York Rangers. Guys, two teams that are playing unbelievable hockey right now, but even me, as a Canadian, uh, Canadians fan, as someone that kind of chirps the Maple Leafs, I got to give them credit. They're looking good under new head coach Craig Berube so far. They're looking good, playing good hockey. They're getting a lead. They're sitting on it, protecting it, um, playing the type of hockey that they've been looking for. They've been trying to play for quite some time now. Um, having said that, though, it's not all going to be great for them, you know, and it's been three straight smooth sailing victories for Toronto. Uh, I think they might get a humbling experience when a New York Rangers veteran team comes to town that's been playing some really good hockey themselves, a good goaltender, a team that plays physical. They have that really good mix, the Rangers, of uh, top six that plays offensively and a bottom six that plays a bit more physical and hard-nosed. Um, I think Toronto's been playing well, guys. Don't get me wrong, but I think New York, at the price we're getting, a nice plus price, I feel like the Rangers are the play on Saturday night. So a nice little underdog for you guys as well. We'll go back-to-back -back underdogs in that one. All right, Capitals and Devils. 2-0 start for the Capitals. Uh, but again, the word humbled 
kind of you know shows to me in this one. This is a Capitals team that I think they've played the, one of the one of the fewest games so far out of every other team in the NHL. They haven't played that many games whatsoever. The Devils have played a ton of games already in the season, of course, because they started over there in Prague against the the Sabers, playing back to back games. Uh, when it comes down to it, but um, back at home for this Devils team. I think the first period minus a half goal at plus 145 is a really good play. I thought the Devils looked pretty good in their last game, and I feel like the Capitals have just kind of been put in advantageous spots so far. So I'm not saying their 2-0 and isn't real, but I am saying their 2-0 and doesn't make them look as good as I think they are or, or, or makes them look better than I think they are. So I like isolating these first periods sometimes, and I feel like the Capitals are going to get a bit humbled in the first period. Minus a half goal plus the 145 uh, is the way to go in that one. And guys, if you're liking these picks, if we made you some money last Saturday with the every game on the board, please hit the like button on this video. It helps me out personally. It tells Wager Talk that I'm doing a good job. It tells me that you guys are engaging. And if you guys comment to let me know a pick that you are betting, a, a pick you agree with me or disagree with me on, uh, it helps me as well. It helps the algorithm. Uh, and it, help, it helps encourage me to do more of these videos here um, and, and get these set for, for Saturday because it's always a big, big day on Saturday in the NHL. Okay, guys, uh, we have a Columbus team that is overachieving right now. You know, they've, they're off a couple emotional games. Um, they're 2-1 and one, their last three, which might not sound that great, but it's great for a team like Columbus that's expected to be pretty bad. Um, I think that Minnesota is the kind of team that's going to win the games they should and then have a tough time stepping up in class. You know, they're a team that takes care of business against teams they should, but when they play teams where it's kind of more of a pick them or, or they're short underdogs, I feel like that's where the wild fail to play their best hockey. So having said all of that, they scored four goals in their last game. The fourth one was actually a goalie goal, but I think this time around they'll score four goals a little bit easier on this Columbus team. And keep in mind, Columbus won a game the other day, where they still allowed four goals. So even if their offense is playing decent and above expectations, we can still make money, um, guys, by looking at the uh, the team total over for the opponent um, of the Minnesota Wild. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the team, or sorry, team total over for the Wild uh, against some of these teams, uh, against the Columbus Blue Jackets and some of these weaker teams. So that's what we're going to rock with there. Um, all right, guys, here's one I really like here. And, and this one, I definitely think you guys should bet. This one's going to be a client play for me. So if you're still with me after all this, I uh, hope you bet this one with me as well. All right. Third game of a four-game road trip uh, for the Flyers. And uh, you take a look at, uh, at uh, Philadelphia. First game off road trip. Um, there's so many unique situations in this one. We've got uh, the revenge um, from from the Canucks and, and Flyers playing last time. Canucks lost 3-2. And I think that over six is the best one. I mean, first game off road trip for Philadelphia. You've got the rapid revenge spot from these teams playing recently. You have the Canucks getting their first win of the season uh, for them in their last time out over the Florida Panthers. This one is just a really good bet on spot. This is going to be a game where you see lots of goals. Going to be a mixture of fatigue, going to be a mixture of travel, uh, and just a really good spot for us to jump out and see a ton of goals. And also, an angle of you guys know me across all kinds of sports. I like betting when you see teams play each other twice in a short period of time. If the first game goes over, second one you bet under. If the first meeting goes under, the second one you bet the over. And with it being 3 2 and tight checking, uh, in the game they played in Philadelphia, excuse me, in, in Vancouver, this one in Philly, I expect to be quite high scoring. So we're going to go with over six here. Uh, apologize if I was a little bit confusing at the start as uh, my sheet, I had it mixed up, uh, the who was home and who's away. But nonetheless, a lot of travel, a lot of different interesting spots uh, in this matchup. I think over six is the best bet between the Philadelphia Flyers uh, and the Vancouver Canucks. This will be a client play, guys. This one should be really entertaining to look at here. All right, uh, Hurricanes and Blues. I like the Blues, guys. Plus 114 is the price that I got. Uh, very simple. You know, this is one of those ones where we're going to fade the back-to-back. -back. 
it's not always that easy, but so far, so good, guys. This NHL season, teams have actually struggled second half of back-to-back. People might think it's early in the season. How could they be tired? Well, I kind of believe, actually, that t- the teams are not used to the full swing of things in the NHL. So sometimes they're more tired this early in the season than they would be, let's say, in December because they're not used to playing this level of hockey. You know, they're still in summer mode. They shouldn't be, but they might. So teams are struggling in second half of back-to-back. Hurricanes will be second half of back-to-back as they're playing Pittsburgh Friday night. So we're going to go ahead and lock in the Blues plus 114. Uh, And when you take a look at the next one, we have the Sabres and the Hawks going head-to-head here. And when it comes down to it, ultimately, guys, this, blue, this Sabres team is struggling. You know, they score five goals, they give up six. But I think this is a buy low spot on the Buffalo Sabres. Minus 130, are you kidding me? Look, the Hawks have looked better. Don't get me wrong. But Dard's playing well. Tara Vinen, you know, playing well. They got Taylor Hall. They got Rat. You got, you got a lot of guys on this team, and I respect it. But this is a buy low spot for the Buffalo Sabres. The Sabres have talent. I feel like overall, line for line, they are a superior team than the Blackhawks. We're going to go ahead and lock in the the short price of minus 130 on the Buffalo Sabres. Bruins and the Utah Hockey Club. Uh, Guys, look, this is is another spot. First period totals have done extremely, extremely well so far this season. If you can get a good price on this over one and a half, you have to bet this one. This is the first game back after a long, long, long road trip for the Utah Hockey Club, in which was a pretty successful road trip as well. It was an Eastern road trip, and then they went all the way to Anaheim, played against Anaheim, um, went to overtime against them, and then uh, now they're back at home. The Boston Bruins have kind of been resting for a couple days here, um, and uh, they're going to be ready for a good game. So we're going to take over one and a half in that one. And uh, the last pick I have, and this one, I'm iffy on it, guys. Flames and Kraken, I think both teams are a little bit uh, overachieving offensively. I think they're both their games have been, both their teams' games have had more goals than I think they should should be. Um, Good goaltending, good defensive pairs, but I just don't like the offensives that both these teams have. So um, I, I think the defense is actually better on Calgary than I initially thought at the start of the season. So it's kind of a contrarian pick just based on what we've seen so far. We're going to go under six Calgary and Seattle for the last game of the night. Guys, so many picks, um, so much going on on Saturday in the NHL. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully we can make some money with some of these picks. Um, I apologize if I got some stuff mixed up along the way. Sometimes it's a good thing having notes to look at. Sometimes it's not because... Uh, you can kind of get a little mixed up with kind of all the stuff you're looking at here. But again, save 50 is that promo code, guys. We're cashing 5%. We're cashing 4%. We're cashing totals. We're cashing sides. Been a real good season so far. I'm excited about it. We're doing all kinds of content. So if you guys want my plays, use that promo code SAVE50. Take 50 bucks off a 30-day NHL pass. And if you guys aren't looking to buy picks, just show me some love by hitting the like button on this video. I really, truly do appreciate it. So uh, wishing you all a great, great weekend, a very profitable one. And I'll see you next time right here on Wager Talk TV.